Really interesting topic I wanted to discuss today. We are in a global rental crisis. I generally think there's no other word for it. So what I want to talk to you about today is why it's happening, because it's, this isn't a country-specific problem anymore. This is talking about the UK, this is going to talk about Europe, this is going to talk about the US, because literally it's happening everywhere. And what's quite interesting is all the same problems in the same countries, if that makes sense. So you know, the problems that affect the UK seem to be impacting the EU, seem to be ha- impacting the US. And so what I want to do is dive into a few of those specifics. I've got a couple of clips for you to run through. I've got a couple of interesting articles that kind of back it all up. Um, but I'm going to start off by saying my view on people who make money in property always makes me quite uncomfortable. I don't like it. I think too many people made a lot of money through simply being alive in the 70s and 80s sort of thing. That's kind of my honest view. I appreciate that that's kind of quite a disparaging thing to say, but I do think owning a home is a basic right. And I really struggle with the fact that so many of the younger generations just literally cannot get on the property map, both buying and renting this point, simply because people are holding too much stock. That That's the bit I find really frustrating. And I, I do stand by that. You know, I know a lot of people find that quite an unpopular view, but I don't think it's particularly fair. I don't think you should have dozens of houses. I really don't. I think, you know, I would honestly make a rule where you'd cap it and you have a few houses each and all that sort of thing. But we're not going to hear talk about opinion. I want to dive into why the rental market. And I'm going to start off with this Financial Times article. So basically, it's, it's an article that really summarizes the Europe and the UK and why it's such an issue. Extreme renting and how rising rates turn the screws on tenants across Europe. And it's quite significant, right? So I'm going to scroll down to this graph here. So this is what I'm talking about. Rents have hit record highs in a lot of European countries. And you can see, right? Yes, London, obviously, was massively up to 2014, but we had the dip. But actually, it's soaring. You know, Lisbon is way ahead. But to Berlin, London, Madrid, Paris, they're all kind of soaring really high. And I wanted to sort of dig into why that is and set the scene. And there's kind of a few different reasons, right? The first thing is how expensive mortgages have got. So with huge inflation comes huge mortgage increase rate. And basically, a lot of people who were looking to buy now can't are being forced back into the rental market. Alongside this, there's just simply not enough houses, as this clip shows you here. Let's take a look. Property sales here, it's rentals, and in particular, one and two bedroom flats. There simply aren't that many to go round. And it's meant that that has priced locals out who say they're very upset and want the council to do something about it. So this is a town in the UK called Froome and it's basically on the sort of piercing end of some really savage rental increases but it is representative across the UK this is just an example this is not the example and what's quite interesting is media you'll notice the one and two bed the people need that younger generations right it's people with first job coming living with a friend and want to live on your own whatever it might be those are the people being screwed more than most and I appreciate a lot of the old generations are also that so please don't sort of jump on the comments there but like that, that that's the that's the truth right but as we've discovered, it's not just an issue isolated to Froome. It is, in fact, a national problem. Exactly. This is my van I converted. For 24-year-old Summer, finding a property to rent in Froome has been so difficult. And this is kind of where we're at now. Like, youngsters are actually having to kit out. And look, I know it looks fun and TikTok and Instagram makes that look quite trendy. As well. But if you want to live in a flat or a house and you're being forced to live in a van. That's very different, right? I get like kitting up a van, going to live in that, you know, going traveling around the world, living in, I get that's an absolute right. That's not what you want if you actually want to live. If you're trying to afford to buy a place but they can't because there's not enough, that's just an issue, right? So yeah, th- this is kind of mad when you think about it. She's resorted to sleeping in a van. I would love to live in a small house. I'm not really looking for anything big. It's a struggle to like not be able to afford to rent here. It's a similar story for clothing shop manager Sarah Wingrove. For me, unfortunately, it's going to be about leaving Froome, which breaks my heart because my job is here, my family are here, my friends are here. Exclusive figures show the number of people looking to rent in the... So this is important, right? So if the service provider, you know, she's a shop manager and she can't afford it, what do you think happens to the shop if they can't find anyone because no one can afford to live here? Like, so this, these are the implications that happen. But this next bit's crazy. These stats are absolutely mind-blowing. Rent in the UK is up 40% since 2019. But the number of available properties down 41%. 40% increase since 2019 in requests for rentals, but the stock available is down 41%. Competition is so fierce, there can be up to 30 people chasing each rental. 30 people chasing each rental. Like, How is that not just setting off the 
biggest bloody alarm bells in any sort of person with authority because that's absolute madness, right? We've just not got enough houses. We've And this is just a systemic issue that we've had for years and years. We've just not built. And it always comes down to everyone doesn't want to build here on that. And, you know, because people don't want people, houses built in the backyard. And I get that. I, re I really do. But, like, the frustration, the amount of times housing is blocked because of, oh, I don't want to see them. I've got my view. And I get, I, I truly get, I get it frustrating, but we just have to build houses. We just don't have enough. It's going to cause so many issues. With average asking prices sitting at £1,200 a month outside London and higher in Froome, £1,500 a month, around half the average salary. The town's council has declared the housing crisis an emergency. Ordinary people who work in the town have seen their rents go up. So that's it, right? That's it. So we, it's a housing crisis. It is. Um, and you can see this is just the UK. This is something that's replicated across the EU. It's replicated across, um, you know, the US. And so why is that? You know, what's the kind of core problem? So like I said, not enough houses is just the one thing. We just fundamentally have not built enough houses. The other challenge is landlords. The problem with this is when you're trying to maximise profits, and look, and this goes back to my point, is like this why I get uncomfortable with the idea of making money out of this particular sector. And like I'm not talking about, you know, the people who build out of, of course, you but I'm talking about the people who buy houses to make a profit. That's the bit I don't get. You know, if you want to make money building houses, it's fantastic. My God, we need more of you. I'm talking purely, when I say I don't like people who make money in property, I'm talking about the people who buy it and then just rent or sit on them as asset. That's the thing that really frustrates me. And I'll tell you why that is, right? The problem with landlords, or some landlords, look, some landlords, I'm not just going to sort of castigate all sort of landlords in one sweep, but like a lot of landlords this does apply to, is when you just try and do it for maximised profit, you squeeze people out in the market. And it's the younger generations who have had less chance to earn capital, have less chance to build their salaries. Those are the people who get impacted the most. And so it's just not fair, right? It's just categorically not fair. And so the problem is you have, and then you get people, and this is why landlords get a bad name, this is why sort of people struggle, you get articles like this, which is one from New York, which says that more than 13,000 rent-stabilised units in NYC are sitting empty for multiple years, the report found. And do you know what the report found? The report found that the reason landlords are not renting this because they actually oppose rent-controlled apartments. And so what they're doing is they're refusing to rent them out because they think it's squeezing their profits by the fact that they can't you know, get rid of these sort of rent stabilized places, which is beyond unfair. Like, it's just not good enough, right? That's not a skill. That's not an entrepreneur nuance. That's not, that's just you being a genuine arsehole if you've done that. I really like, I've got no respect for people like that because rent control is obviously one of the most valuable. If you're rented, an absolute godsend. And I get renters, why renters hate, like, sorry, buy let's hate it because they can't maximize the profit. But again, like, should you be allowed to do that? That's the question. The fact we've got 13,000. Rent stabilized units in New York, which is one of the most, you know, thoughtful real estate in the sense of there couldn't be couldn't be less space if you tried. Like they desperately need every single house. They've got thirteen thousand rent stabilized units sitting empty for multiple years simply because landlords don't like the idea of them and they're kind of holding it out as protest, which is just not good enough. And then you kind of bear in mind you think right, well, you know, we've got a rental crisis, and then you start seeing interviews like this where people go around asking how big your portfolio is. How big is your portfolio? It's not huge. Um, it, it's just under 10, 10 properties. Just under 10. Just just under 10 properties. Oh, I'll, I'll hang in there. I mean, I just don't know how you're going to survive. I mean, just, you know, stay strong. I've, I've got a medium-sized portfolio. What does, that, what does that mean in a number term? Uh, uh, over 20. Oh, over 20. Over 20 houses is considered a medium portfolio. And again, like, he's not built them. Do you know what I mean? Like these, these are not people. This morning they've just bought them up with the existing assets they already have because they got basis money off the early days of property. This is what I mean. This is why it's a rental crack because, and now they're squeezing and they add price. This is what I mean. There's, and people might say, "Oh, it's twenty houses." Or, yes, but when you're squeezing it for profit, that's when the issue arises because you price people out the market and it's the young and treasury it gets stung. Biggest portfolio. That's a really good question. Mm. Um, well, suppose it goes into three digits. Well, yeah, it's it's multi millions. Mm. Yeah, but it didn't happen overnight. Started from nothing. Well, yeah. Why did you start from nothing at a price where houses cost nothing? This is the point, right? You know. Um, when I was about 18, 19, uh, and he was in the family, um, took a few problems over from my grandparents. You know, again, like, and again, like, I'm not, like, I don't want to begrudge people's success, but like, you've inherited property from your family, so you've added to, so you've allowed you to build your portfolio because you had a few assets already in place. And like, this stuff isn't hard, right? But the problem is, 
is when rental is so squeezed, when you've got people buying off as much property as they can, because again, the reason why we've got a part of the reason why we've got a rental crisis is because we haven't got enough people to, to buy landlords. houses um, and people who sit on them like this, they can't afford them. Um, you see what I mean? Family. Like people could buy those houses, um, there'd be less people who live for the rental. So like, all this kind of ed- adds up. And, and the problem with this, and the reason uh, why I do get frustrated a little bit is because making money is good. I know I'm not sure I've done this for years, all that sort of things. Like I'm not, you know, I, I, I'm making money is great. You know, I'm all for it. Do something, you know, build something, all that kind of stuff. But like there are human costs and human consequences to this. And we've got a rental crisis. And the fact that it's such a base necessity, we've got people living in vans, like I saw in that earlier clip, it's such a base necessity. And the problem is, is you then start getting clips like this, which is, is some form healed by compassion. Um, and it's some channel four news. And they're basically saying that more than 3 million people in England who are in work and rent their own homes, don't have enough savings to pay their rent for a month if they lose their job. Think about those exact phrases. Three million people, bear in mind there's only about 65 million people in England anyway. There's three million. They are in work. So this is on homeless. These are people who are unemployed. This is literally people are in work because there's a cost of living crisis and was getting squeezed so much. They rent their own homes and they don't have enough savings to pay their rent for a month. And a huge contribution of that is how expensive rent is and how much of their income they're having to put on the rental market. So, yeah, I mean, look, like I said, again, I don't want to just sound like I'm slamming landlords because I don't think that's fair. There's obviously some good ones in there. I've got lots of stories that there are good ones. However, there are enough poor ones who just want to squeeze money. And what I mean is I don't find it particularly talented when I, you know, I said this earlier, I don't find it that talented to just buy cut properties and then rent them out at extortionate costs because you've not like you own the asset and everyone needs the assets. It's not like hard. Do you know what I mean? Like we're desperately short of houses, which is why you get to charge through the nose. So this is kind of my problem with this. So we've got to build more houses. We just have to, and we've got to kind of push that through as soon as possible because my God, are we behind that already? We have to start looking at these rent costs because too many people, if we go home and again, because this is what's so stupid, right? We all want a good economy. If three million people go out of work and lose their home, what do you think happens to the economy? You think, that, you think that's a benefit to everyone? Like, this is why it's so short sighted that we've got to get on top of this. Um, and then, yeah, look, I think we just got to go as hard. But, I, you know, I, I, you know, like I said, I don't like the idea of people buying up 20, 25, 30 houses just to rent out at a huge profit. I don't like that idea. It sits very uncomfortably with me. You know, have a great family home, all for that. If you, you know, if you do very well and you want to buy a holiday home or a couple of other homes, I'm down for, do you know I mean? Again, like I'm down for that. I don't want to sort of just sound like, you know, if you want to buy two, three, four homes because you do very well, great. But cap it at some point, right? At some point you have to say, look, you've bought too many. Like you can't just have 10, 15, 20, 30 properties. That's just, that just can't be right. You know, so I, yeah, so I don't know. Um, you know, it is something I'm keeping an eye on. I am quite worried about it. Um, and I guess we'll just have to see how it all plays out. But yeah, you know, please do be careful. Um, look after yourself. Um, and I will catch you all tomorrow. Thanks very much.